Hello, my name's Joe, and what we're going to be looking at in our little Houdini adventure today is how to add a simple texture to our fence panel um, system we've been making here. If you find this helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell for more videos, and don't forget to check out my website, 3dassetlibrary.com, for Unreal and Unity Engine assets. So, we've in uh, previous videos, we've created this fence here that follows a curve um, that we can place down and generates this and orients the fence panels in the correct direction. So, what we want to do is just add some, um, say, a wood texture to this and and maybe a little bit of metal down here. So first thing I did is I went to um, textures.com. Um, only reason I'm using this is so that you know anybody can follow along. And then I went to PBR materials, um, wood varia, scroll down, and then I am using, I believe, this texture here. What you want to do is obviously once you've created an account, is you want to download the uh, albedo, normal, roughness, and ambient occlusion. I've just chose um, 10 uh, 1024. Obviously, the higher you go, um, the better the quality, but for, for what we're doing for this purpose of this two tutorial, that's fine. So inside Houdini, what we want to do is basically we we could add everything at the end here and um, uh, or just before this copy to point here and um, it applies the whole texture but what we want to do is we want to add um, what, what, what I would like to do is add make it so that we can add a texture to this a texture to this each individual part and then it's copied across and um, the reason being is obviously if I wanted to add a, a red cap on here I could I don't have to you know fiddle about with textures and try and manipulate that so what we'll do is we'll start with our post so you've got to find our post so obviously if we've named everything here so that's that and just select the uh, last part of it so our post is there so as you can see currently it is great we're just going to use the auto UVs so we drag off of the poly bevel and type in auto and select labs auto UV then we'll just drag that onto the other line there so now what happens is that we will have UVs so if we press 5 on our keyboard that takes us to our UV view so if we go back to poly bevel you can see here there's nothing and where we've added the auto UV it's added our UVs here. Now over here you've got, um, in this panel here, you've got all these different settings. You can drop down here and say, well, I want it to find shortest path. Um, obviously, depending on how complicated you see here, what it's done is it's cut it all up. And then you can sort of like re reposition, you know, how, how much of it, how aggressive you want it to be and things like that. But what we'll do is we'll just, um, I'll just delete that so we've got all the same. We're just going to use the auto UV for this. And um, uh, just for this one and we'll gradually change that um, as we need them you've got your padding your resolution down here we're just going to leave it at 10 to 4 and um, this is something you can look in on your own of what each things do because it's obviously we just want to move along so if we hit one on the keyboard that takes us back to our view there so then what we're going to do is we're going to drag off of this again and uh, hit tab and type in material and I'm just going to use the quick material here um, you've got everything for unreal and things like that but just for me I'm going to use the quick material for the purposes of this and then what we'll do is click on the quick material and this will go white and then what we want to do is in them with the material selected drop down labs PBR and um, then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our video tick texture and then go to our uh, folder location and we will set, select albedo and then we'll go down to roughness use texture and um, select roughness um, I believe I uh, think this roughness by the looks of it is um, we just need to it's a bit too shiny so I think we need to invert the roughness so you take that and then we can um, add more or less shine as we need it but obviously wood generally unless it's a gloss wood isn't shiny so just set it to three uh, scroll down leave metallic as it is to normal tick normal gives us the simulation of like detail in the um, in the wood if I just turn off the color for a minute you can see that there'll be uh, you can see that in there there's like indentations like you would get in wood and, and then we'll scroll down to the ambient occlusion take again and select AO um, I think all of this here we don't really need to touch obviously the, the options are there if you need them so then what we're going to do is we will just copy those two and I'm just going to paste them here just so I can break the line so what we'll do is we'll copy those again and we will then go to our cap. So we want to make sure that we're getting the cap before it's being copied um, to the top of our point here. And um, then what we'll do is we'll just create ourselves a little bit of space here. And just drag that out and drag these up. And then we'll paste, in theory, it's gone on there. Copy, 
paste. Yeah, there we go. And then just drag those in to slot the pin in. So then what happens there, we've got our cap, go to our UVs, you can see it's been unwrapped here. And uh, remember five on the keyboard to get to our UVs, one to get back to here. And then when we go to our copy to point, we should have our cap there, yep. So then currently we've got our wood post here. So now what we're gonna do, this is gonna be slightly different, is we're just gonna uh, make this red here, like a ready type metal. Um, so what we wanna do for this one is, because we've got two here, we've got the sphere and the metal post, we're just gonna do it after the merge. So what we'll do is we'll just drag this down and <clears throat> again paste, drag those onto the line and again, if we look at our UVs now, so what we'll do is we'll go there, you can see here, it's all unwrapped, um, back to one. And what we're gonna do is click on our quick material and we're gonna just untick, uh, use texture on all of these that we've turned on. Uh, just turn invert roughness off and we're gonna start again. So we're gonna select a base color, so say a red, uh, we want a bit of a deeper red. Um, close that, our roughness is how shiny it is, so you can see there, um, what we're doing, we're going to give it something a bit like that. Our metallic is, we want it to be a, like a metal. And um, so we'll just put it put it like that for the minute. And um, we'll just leave that as it is. So then what happens is when we go back to our post here, we now have our post with a wood metal bottom there and the rest is wood. And now what that allows us to do is that we can go into like our cap there. And if we wanted to, we could turn off the texture. We've got a white cap there, so we can just then say add a red cap if we wanted to. But obviously we just want to, um, well, we can change the look there. We can have the um, the wood turned on and change the cap color if we want to. So I believe if we set that back to white, yeah, that takes us back to our default. So that is our posts done. So now what we want to do is move to our panels. So obviously we've got our frame here and we want to paste that after our, our bevel there. And again onto the line and just check that. So you can see it's a bit squiffy here. So we want to look at the UVs. So if we go like that and probably we want to select our UV for this and I'll probably select short as path I believe it is and what we can do here is if we just set that to zero and oh, select UV unwrap um because that just gives you the uh so drop that down not uh, not shortest path UV unwrap and um that's saying um sort of your bog standard uh, what we want so in theory if we go back to our material now there you go. So before you can see before, if we sweat, set that back to auto seam, it's all squiffy at the top here. It's not properly laying it all out. And then when we go to uh, UV unwrap, that's just given us a very simple unwrap here, um, auto unwrap. So now what we'll do is we'll move along to our cross beams. So drag this up. What we want to do is put this before the copy and paste that in. And what we should now have is our cross beams there. Yep. And our UVs, yep, very just box standard UVs there. We could, um, you know, again, if you wanted to, depending on what you're doing, you can set, you know, set you, your method and things like that. But for, for this, just for the purpose of this, we're going to stick to primarily um, auto unwrap. Now what we'll do is we'll go to our uh, pieces. So these are essentially the, uh, I guess, the, the panels, the wooden panels. And um, so what we'll do is, again, drag that up. and We want it in before the copy and um, paste that there and that's slotted in so there we go we've got our wooden thing and now what happens here is we've got our um, all our panels going across so now when we look at our fence here we should be getting somewhere yep and now we just want to do the the uh, lat at the top here so what we'll do for this is again before the copy so up here plonk it in uh, just do it, uh, I'm going to do it on the merge, just before, um, after the merge, and plonk that in, and there we go, we've got that there. So now what happens is when we go to our copy to points down here, we now have a wooden fence that's all the way along with our little red caps down, uh, metal foot down here, and... as you can see, obviously everything looks identical, what we're going to do is, um, in the future, is look at how we can 
manipulate the UV so that they're randomly placed down. But what I, um, we can do is just put a little um, randomizing in here that can change the sort of, I, I guess, the brightness of the panels and things like that so that they do get better variation. So what we want to do is go right down to our copy to points and just in the, the merge here, we're going to type a uh, right click and type random and you'll see straight away when we drop this in, it's going to add all these random colors in. So what we can do here is we could change, you know, things like our values here. Um, but obviously we don't really want it to be funky colors like this. So we'll drag this dimensions fader down to one. And you can see here it's added some randomization to our panel. So if we go back to, uh, I believe if we um, just go back up to here, you can see that their pre-randomization is not really doing anything. Um, after the randomization, you can see the difference there. And I believe obviously you can um, obviously affect these results here. So if you wanted it a bit brighter, um, you can do that. I think off the to make it easy to control off the global scale scale here. So you can see there now we've got a usable fence with a bit of randomization in the color here, and um, you know we've we've looked at just doing a very simple auto. Um, auto UV and then applying a quick material to just get us to this point and as you can see I'm, I'm personally very happy with this and I'm hopefully you are so if it's helpful being great um, if it's been helpful sorry great um, so yeah we'll look at the next thing um, I'll be looking at some other things of what we can do in um, tutorials and uh, so this has got us to a final usable asset we can do um, in the future we're hopefully we'll be able to figure out how to when we extend this you know, say this this post here that it automatically adds slats in and things like that. So, um, you know, we can scale up, up scale items up. You know, obviously, hopefully, move on from the fence. You know, I don't want to keep going fences over and over. And um, we'll look at something perhaps like a bridge next or ladders or something silly, silly like that. So it just gets us sort of practicing things and um, uh, hopefully getting a bit more of an understanding of how this all works. And so, yeah, cheers. <laughs>